to worship with Faithfully Friend Church. Um, happy Advent! Uh, this is the first Sunday of Advent, um, a season of preparing for Jesus' arrival in our midst. And we are so, so thankful that you are with us this morning. Um, just a couple of announcements about the service. Um, as we are on live stream, we encourage you to make use of the chat boxes. Uh, greet everyone this morning. Tell us where you're worshiping from. Uh, when it comes time to pass the peace, please do so over the chat. Um, again, this is uh, just one way that we can use this uh, technology that we have as our disposal to, at our disposal to uh, continue to knit us together as a worshiping community. Our service this morning will consist of both live and pre-recorded segments, and um, we are also celebrating Holy Communion this morning. So if you have not yet done so, please gather bread or crackers and wine or grape juice and set them aside until we come to that portion of our service. And so now I encourage you all to light a candle and prepare your hearts and minds for worship. And please join us in the gathering hymn soon and very soon. Hi, we're the Hogansons. I'm John. This is Brant, Misha, and Brody. And we are going to be lighting uh, an Advent candle today for the beginning of Advent. And so uh, Misha's going to tell you a little bit about our wreath right here. Um, the Advent wreath that we have is from when I was, um, before I was born actually. Um, and it was made in Germany. And I can't really see it very easily, but um, there's a nativity scene right here. And then the wise men and the shepherds come and visit. And when all four Advent candles are lit, the heat from the candle rises and makes it spin. So that's kind of neat. All right. So uh, we are, I'm going to read this part and uh, then we're going to just kind of all read our own parts here. So we are people on a journey. We light candles as signposts. To help us see where we are going in our lives we long for christ we light candles to testify that the day will come when christ will come again we we begin with hope
Why do we call this candle the candle of hope? We call this candle the candle of hope because its light reminds us of the hope we have in God's promises, even when we dwell in the shadows. For our hope is in the Lord who made the heaven and the earth and who has promised to be faithful to us in every moment of our lives. We, have also, we also have hope that in, Jesus, in Christ, God will make all things new and bring joy, peace, and love to all. Let us hear what scripture has to say. Well, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who await for him. Let us pray. May those who feel hopeless take strength from the light of this candle May those who are full of hope shine with its light. Amen. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen. Together let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Jesus, who comes as new birth, we have prepared for you with comfortable traditions and humble requests. We have memorialized your birth as if it was a past act and not the bold declaration of a living God. We have rested in the safer hope of your work, abandoning our call as co-creators of the beloved community, harming your children with our ill-informed action and comfort catering inaction. All this we humbly confess. Help us remember in this season of anticipation that we prepare not only for you, but because of you. Challenge us to examine our intentions and to hold sacred both the act of preparing and the transforming justice love of the one who comes. Amen. People of God, hear this good news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free, free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Give ear, O God, in whom we hope, to our pleas for your help. Rend the heavens and come down, that we may see your great power and glory. Make us attentive to the signs of your coming, and wake us up anew to your presence, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us be attentive to God's word. Our first lesson comes from Isaiah, the 64th chapter. 
O oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider we are all your people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now please join me in the gospel acclamation. Alleluia. Show us your steadfast love, O God, and grant us your salvation. Alleluia. This is the Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 13th chapter. In those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the Holy Gospel. Praise to you, O Christ. Now I invite all of the children who are with us this morning to pay special attention for a special message. So good morning, everyone. I'm so glad that you're with us today. Today we are going to talk about waiting. We all need to wait sometimes, don't we? We might stop at the corner and wait for the light to turn green before crossing the street. We might wait our turn in line at the store or at school or when we're playing a game. If we want to ask a question, we might raise our hand either in person or on um, online school and we wait for our teachers to call on us before we speak. And sometimes it can be really hard to wait for some things. Like, it's hard to wait for a vacation that you've really been looking forward to, or maybe seeing family members who you haven't seen for a long time. Or sometimes it can seem like forever until it's your birthday and you get to open presents and have cake and, and celebrate in whatever way that you celebrate. It can take, it can, oh, it's just so long sometimes. But this morning I have a special picture for you. Now this is a picture of someone who is waiting. 
This is my dog, Kisco. And she is waiting to go for a walk. You can kind of see that she has her collar on and there's a little leash at the bottom of the picture. But she's waiting to go for a walk. And she really, really likes walks. So she is so excited. And can you imagine how hard it is for her to wait and how long that wait must seem for her for something that she really, really likes? All right, so I'm going to put Kisco away for a second. But today is the beginning of a new season in the church year. It's a time of waiting and getting ready for Christmas. And it can be hard to wait for something as wonderful as Christmas. And so during Advent, we have all sorts of special activities and things that we do to help us wait. So one thing is uh, gathering together for worship every Sunday. Um, another is lighting the Advent wreath every Sunday. There's a new candle that is lit every Sunday until we get to Christmas Eve when we light the middle candle. And when all five of those candles are lit, it means that Christmas is here. And so our waiting will be over. And that will be a wonderful day. And so now as we wait, another thing we do is we pray together. And so please pray with me. Dear God, we thank you for this special time of year. Help us to be patient during Advent and bless us as we wait for Jesus' birthday, Christmas. Amen. All right, thank you so much for joining me for the message this morning. And now please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. About a decade ago, my husband Chris climbed Mount Rainier with a small group of climbers and a guide. He lucked out with great climbing conditions. So his group was able to make it all the way up to the summit and back without any significant challenges. After he got back in cell phone range, he gave me a call to debrief this amazing experience that he had just had. And so on our call, I asked him what he was going to remember about it for the rest of his life. Was it gonna be something awesome like standing on the summit or his new mountaineering skills that he could use in other mountains? or maybe walking across crevasses, or hanging out with people who had climbed Mount Everest. You know, the, the really big, exciting, spectacular things. Well, Chris's answer surprised me. He said that what he will remember most is walking in a straight line in the dark for hours. The majority of his climb to the summit happened before sunrise, so he experienced hours of walking in a line, roped into the person ahead of him and the one behind him for safety, and he was only able to see about a foot or two ahead of him at any given time with uh, his headlamp, and he just walked and walked and walked. His crampons crunched in the snow, he struggled for breath in the thin air, he couldn't go any faster or slower because he was in this line of roped in climbers. And he just walked and walked and walked. And so oddly enough, this is a perfect description of discipleship. It isn't attractive, I will give you that. We're not going to get anyone to sign up to join our congregation with this ad campaign. Come join Faith Lutheran Church. We can guarantee you a journey that will make you feel like you are going nowhere. <laughs> but isn't our journey as followers of Jesus one that is long and slow and plodding? We may hit some peaks and valleys here and there, but most days it's just one foot in front of the other, struggling to see ahead of us as we stumble around in the darkness moving toward a promise and the hope of that promise. Advent is a season that reminds us of our long, slow journey toward the fulfillment of God's promises. 
Advent is a journey in and of itself that we take every year as we light candles and sing hymns and recite prayers and hear stories that prepare us for Jesus' arrival as a baby in Bethlehem and again in the fullness of time. And one thing I find curious about our scripture readings for this week, the very first week of Advent, the very first week of the church year, is that these readings are all laments. They're expressions of grief, of sorrow, of a deep sense of woundedness. They express the desire to see God, for God to make God's presence known. They stand in the gap between the knowledge of God's ever-constant presence and our inability to see God face to face, particularly in times of great sadness or challenge. The hiddenness of God is a fact of our journey of faith. And sometimes it just becomes too much to bear. The world is not okay. Have you seen all of the pain and suffering and sorrow and loss and death all around us? And neither is God's apparent absence. And this hurts. But isn't there a contradiction here? Isn't Advent supposed to be a season of joyful preparation for the joy of Christmas morning? Aren't we supposed to decorate our homes with bright lights and greenery? and listen to Mariah Carey's Christmas album, and watch Hallmark Channel movies with happy endings, like The Christmas Prince? (laughs) The messages we get from advertisers and television and music executives don't allow for any other feelings other than happiness and excitement. And in the face of everything we have contended with in the past year, and looking ahead to the challenges of the next days and weeks ahead, These messages and the escape they provide from our present reality might actually make us feel better. Sometimes it can be great to sit down with those Hallmark Channel movies. But I also suspect that they may leave us wanting. So perhaps we can find hope in the lament that is offered by our texts on this first Sunday in Advent. Because they tell the truth of our situation. Everything is laid bare. The brokenness of the world, our sadness, our deep desire to see God, for God to make God's presence known, and also our abiding faith in that promise of God's presence. These texts give us permission to voice our sadness and our urgent cry for God to show up. And much like a wound that needs to be exposed to air before it can fully heal, our woundedness is uncovered by these texts. We don't need to cover them up with false cheer and a smile on the outside until you feel it on the inside kind of attitude. We can be truth tellers about our pain and our utter dependence on God, as well as our deep faith in God as we journey through shadows and unknowing toward God's promises. And as we plod along on our journey, we will begin to see things. Have you ever stepped into utter darkness? Like a basement or a cave or a dark room or a moonless night? It's disorienting. You can't see anything. But then your eyes begin to adjust and you begin to notice things the outline of the house across the street, or your favorite chair in the middle of the room, or the flicker of a campfire several campsites away. away. You begin to see things in a whole new way. And in our lives, when the proverbial sun is darkened and the moon will not give us light and the stars fall, it's not a sentence of despair over the loss of light but it is an invitation to see things in a new way, to sense the presence of God, shining forth a new kind of light that serves as a guidepost on our journey toward the fulfillment of God's promises. So in this season of Advent, may we remember that we are people who are on a journey. 
It's a journey that, in the words of pastor and biblical translator Eugene Peterson, is a long obedience in the same direction. It's one that will train us to see the world in a different way, to get down to the truth of things. It's a journey that prepares us to see the truth of who our God is, one who we want to show up in acts of power and might, but who actually comes to us as a tiny, helpless baby. Friends in Christ, let us embark on this journey together. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, inclusion, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, thawing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, and long-lasting droughts. Renew the face of the earth and our relationship to it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people in our families and congregation who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses, especially the Opes Donahue household, Janelle, Julie, Duane, Cheryl, Jim, Geraldine, Henry, Mike, Stephen, Joyce, Jamie Ann, Sharon, Carol, Art and Bev, Ron, Lisa Ray, Michael, Donald, Alex, Val, Marilyn, Julie, Laverne, and Larry. All who are sick with COVID-19 and those whom we hold silently in our hearts. Ease their suffering and support them when they struggle. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the lives and witness of those who died while waiting for justice, peace, or healing. Those names we know and those whose names are known only to you. We pray especially for the Winter family upon the death of Lyle. Sustain all who still yearn for the completion of your redeeming work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please take a moment to share a sign of peace with those who you are gathered with this morning and to share one in the chat boxes on the live stream. And now as we listen to the offertory, I encourage you to reflect on the ways that um, you have been blessed by the ministry at Faith and the ways that you hope it continues to be a blessing to others and to make an offering either online through our website or you can mail a check-in or send a text or use the handy QR code that is on our screen.
Thank you, Cora. That was beautiful. And now let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name, in the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. And now I invite you, if you have not yet done so, to gather your bread or crackers and wine or grape juice as we prepare to celebrate the Lord's Supper together. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of hope, beginning and end, creator of all that is, in you we trust. You promised Abraham and Sarah they would be parents of many nations, and they were. You promised to deliver your people from Egypt, and you did. Through Christ, you promised salvation. Blessed are your promises. You were with Israel in the desert. You were with Christ at his death. You are with us even now. Blessed is your presence. From the beauty of darkness, you created all that is. You breathed life into dust, parted seas, and ripped open the heavens. You cast the mighty down from their thrones and lift up the lowly. Blessed is your power. You came to bring good news to the poor and to let the oppressed go free. You became incarnate so that we would have abundant life. You were murdered so that we would be free. Blessed is your love. In you lies our hope, in you lies our salvation, in you we trust. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his friends, those who loved him, those who would betray him, those who saw hope for a new future in his life. And as they ate, our Lord Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this and remember me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we place our hope in the promise that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Emmanuel, send your spirit upon this bread and wine. Strengthen us for the journey. Transform us with your love. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, Holy One, creator of all that is beginning and end. Grant us hope for the creation of the new world and faith in your kingdom come through Jesus Christ and the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in he heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Even as we watch and wait, Christ is here. Come, eat and drink. So I invite you to share the elements with those you are gathered with at home or else to receive them as I share them with you now. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Let us pray. God, in whom we place our hope, in this meal you have given us a taste of life with you, a future in which the mighty have been cast down from their thrones and the lowly have been lifted up, a future that you ask us to co-create with you here and now. Send us forth into the world to do as Christ taught us, revealing your love through our words and deeds, showing others the greatness of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A few announcements about the week ahead. Um, first, if you reserved an Advent in a Box kit, they are ready and they are here at the church for you to come and pick up. Uh, they are in some um, big rubber maids that are right outside of the front doors to the church building. Um, so you can come and pick them up at whatever time that you're able to do so. If you would prefer to have them dropped off, please contact me and we'll arrange that. We also have some new Lutheran prayer books that will be available in um, one of the small Rubbermaid boxes on the bench outside of the front entrance. Um, we also have a few extra devotional guides for the season of Advent um, that were part of the Advent in a Box kit but can be used separately. So if you would like one of those, please contact the church office and we can either give you a hard copy or else email you an electronic copy. So looking ahead to, well, first before I look ahead to the week ahead, um, right after this, we will be having a fellowship hour over Zoom. And so you are invited to uh, join to connect with folks um, and just chat about the week behind and the week ahead. And as we look toward the week ahead, um, we have a very packed Wednesday. So it begins at 8 a.m. with our Bible study. And we're heading in a new direction as we start this new church year. We're going to be looking at the book of Acts for the next uh, couple of weeks and months ahead. Um, it's a really exciting book of the Bible. It is the origin story of the church. We hear all about how this church that we're all a part of began, and uh, one commentator talks about how the book of Acts is about the Holy Spirit at loose in the world. So if you want to learn about the book of Acts, please join us at 8 a.m. on Zoom on Wednesday mornings. On Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m., also on Zoom, we'll be gathering for a short Advent evening worship service. Um, we'll be joined by our friends at St. Charles Lutheran and Berea Moravian Church, and it will just be a lovely service of prayer and scripture and song. And then later on, confirmation will, classes will be um, starting this, uh, that Wednesday evening as well at 7.30. So um, we invite all 7th and 8th graders to join us for those. Um, a, a link to the Zoom meeting will be emailed out to confirmation families this week. And so now as we prepare to leave this time of worship, please receive this blessing. The creator of the stars bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior fill you with love. The unexpected spirit guide your journey now and forever. Amen. And now go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.